Good morning. Good morning, America. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of The Big Show hosted by me, of course, Jimmy Smith. Alongside of me, as always, good friend of mine, host of Pissed Off Parent. Give it up one time for Dwayne Ward, the man. Woo! One time, because that's all I got in me. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that you guys can all count on is um, The Big Show will be an entertaining show, and Dwayne always has a good graphic tee to show off. Yes, dads with beards are better. I don't know what store he shops at, guys, but um, there's, there's some cool shit there. That's all I got to say. <laughs> got to keep it entertaining for, for everybody and make them leave them wondering and in shock and awe and stuff. And it's fun to wear these shirts out because, you know, get a smile out of people, get them confused, get into arguments. I mean, it just yep. depends on my mood. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually more of an introvert, but yeah, these, for some reason, I wear these shirts when I go out to, to get conversations it started. It kind of counteracts your introvertness with extrovert, yeah, it, you know, it gets people, like you won't be the first one to necessarily say hi to someone maybe, but the shirt will do it for you. Exactly. This, this is my, like my billboard. And if I don't stop gaining weight, it's going to be a billboard. It's getting out there. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get back into work. I get, well, I say I need to get back into working out. I need to start working out. There's the the thing. I, I that's uh, it's yeah. it's got to begin before you can get back into it's, it, right? It's, it's got to begin. Get some traction. Getting better, yeah. And actually, uh, you know, as, as everyone knows, we uh, didn't have a show last weekend. Um, uh, yeah. Jimmy was not uh, was feeling under the weather. Uh, just with some life changes that you've had and all that, uh, we were kind of chatting uh, before we jumped on here, and uh, one of the things that brought him down is he was not working out as often as he was since it's he's uh, made some changes. Yeah, so you know, that, a, a lot of you guys know that I've, I recently moved, and um, you know, starting um, starting a new position, unpacking boxes at nighttime when I get off work, putting in extra hours. You know, I've been kind of, and then you know, trying to find a new health club, trying to find a new grocery store, trying to find a new whatever, fill in the blank. You know, um, the the end result has been that I've been really inconsistent with my workouts lately. I was telling Dwayne that I probably have trained eight, nine times in the last month and a half. And I usually train four or five times a week. So still beat me, of, though. <laughs> I still beat out Dwayne. <laughs> oh, yeah. By, by eight. <laughs> by eight. Eight or nine. You, if you only by worked eight out eight, you probably beat me by nine. Yeah. I. Oh, God. Or And that's some guys you and girl, you've got to, yeah, get keep active and and uh, do something. I'm sure my wife right now is going, oh my God, this guy is so full of crap. Um, <laughs> Cause I make it sound like I'm like, and she's like, let's go for a walk. She actually, uh, I won't tell her age. Uh, Cause you know, that's one of the, you know, what, Big no eight, eight deadly sins there. Uh, but you know, she's, you know, I, I didn't rob the cradle. Let's just put it that way. I, I came close. You know, I, I went from high school to middle school uh, for my wife there, but uh, she uh, walks with the gals in the morning every couple days. Uh, does a couple miles there. She's very active in in, her, in the community. Uh, like she walked something like four or five miles yesterday just from all of her activities. She's playing cornhole. She's you know uh, putting this event on. She's doing all. And she's very active. And then you got me, uh, and I'm Mr. Couch Potato. And I, I, I yeah, I, I need to change that. But enough about me. <laughs> Starting to feel a little, a little attacked here. <laughs> yeah, scared. You, you, know, <laughs> you bring up a good point, though, Dwayne, because I have definitely noticed a difference in my, um, my mood, my attitude, my spunk, my energy level. You know, I mean, you don't really see it, you know, very quickly, but you just kind of notice it over a few weeks. You just kind of feel a little sluggish. There is a definitely a correlation between, you know, exercising on a regular basis and how you feel compared to uh, when you don't. And even, yeah. I mean, I, I never feel under the weather. I really don't. And for me to kind of really feel bad is a rarity. And, and I know it's because I haven't been training. And, and I um, I also noticed, too, I'll disclose, these uh, pants that I'm wearing right now fit a little tighter oh. than I remember. Okay. Well, yeah. you're used to probably wearing form-fitting. See, I gave up a long time ago. I have elastic shorts. And that... I have like a two or three month window of I won't feel anything. Yeah. And then if I start pushing the elastic out, then it's just time to get the, the new size up. I so. don't have that, uh, that, that, that leeway there. See my, my dress pants have the, the, you know, the little, the little, uh, silver oh, the, click, right? Well, oh. I got the double one. So, okay. You yeah, got nothing, I'm locked but... in, buddy. I mean, okay. if I gain a half an inch on my waist, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in and I'm, 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 I'm not being, I'm Wait. able to breathe very well. You know, are you done lapping? I'm, I'm getting there. 
I'm getting there. You're almost at the Dunlap. For the yeah. people that don't know what Dunlap is, that's when your uh, belly is Dunlapped over your drawers. So, <laughs> Big Show's taking on a whole new meeting. <laughs> you know what? There you go. You you came to you thought you came to see you know physical uh, fitness and all that. No, no. <laughs> you, you came to see fried food and butter. That's what you came exactly. to see today. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. So enough of picking on me. Let's pick on Dwayne a little bit. I, I like picking on Dwayne better than I like picking on myself. It just makes me feel better as a person. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, we're Dwayne doesn't know this. Everyone. Uh -oh. But today's podcast is going to put him on the spot. Ooh, it's time right. to test Dwayne Ward's skills and knowledge, folks. And here's what I mean. Dwayne and I have been going at this for about four months now. Okay. I'm not saying Dwayne was a novice when we started, but I know that Dwayne has learned a lot. He's uh, expanded his horizons. He's uh, had to think a little more about certain areas. All and right. today we're going to test Dwayne's knowledge of Red Pill Universe. We're going to test Dwayne's knowledge of, of, of what the majority, the masses of men think, how right. we think. I per personally, I think Dwayne's going to do just fine. But I'll let you okay. guys judge it. So what we did, what I put together this week, Dwayne, is I put together uh, 10 harsh truths about men that all women should know. Okay. Okay. So All this right. right and and this right here was done on um by polling. This is not my thinking. I right. do agree with uh, I do agree with some of these things and and okay. some I may not agree with whatever. Um but uh this is not from the mind of the big show. This is from the mind of the masses, I guess. Now, um I'm not going to say whether or not the poll was polling men or women or both. I'm oh. just going to spit them out. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, Dwayne, what you think about this. Do you agree? Do you mostly Ooh. agree? Or do you wholeheartedly agree? Or maybe you just go, hey, you know what? This is just total BS. Men do not think this way at all. Women, this is completely off. So we're going to kind of put your skills to the test. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. Now, now I, 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 I caught you at a good time today. And, and the reason why I caught you at a good time is because, like, 15 minutes ago, everybody, Dwayne was literally snoring in his bed. He like woke up late. I was in, I was in the, I was in the, uh, the, the stream yard chat room right here by myself. And usually he beats me in. Usually, usually yeah. he's the one that's bright and early. I came in here. I was all alone. I was like, oh, what's Dwayne? What's going here? Yeah. I'm texting him. I'm like, Hey, you showing up today? And he, nothing. And then he finally, Dwayne goes, Oh, my alarm went off. Dwayne with my new supercomputer. It's your alarm did not go off. What happened was I hacked. You into your into alarm, it. turned it off on purpose so that way you would be late for the show, Dear. not quite wide awake, and then I'm going to throw all these 10 things at you. I'm ready. All right? I, I, I'm ready. So let's, ju let's jump into it. Here are jump 10, in. according to either men or women or both, not going to say, here are mm. 10 harsh truths about men, about men that all women should know. Number one, men need their space. So there, I saw a short video, like an Instagram video recently, where an estranged wife filmed her husband sitting alone in the in the backyard right. um, every single night burning wood. The woman in the video is kind of stunned because she doesn't understand why he prefers to sit quietly for hours in the dark, you know, um, instead of going inside, watching TV with her, things like that. So... That being said, Dwayne, do you agree, slightly agree, not agree at all? Do you agree that all men need their space and why? Uh, I 110% agree that all men need their space. Um, this is uh, something that, yeah, I wish women uh, would understand. We, I, I, well, in the, you know, I, don't, I don't know if we want to say if I'm right up front or wait until I kind of give my reason and then either embarrass me that I got it completely wrong and I'm an idiot <laughs> or go, hey, yeah, no, they agree with you. Um, so why men need their space? Um, we like we are uh, after the day of, you know, killing our food and conquering the world and, and doing uh, all that or put, just putting up all the nonsense usually from them. But uh, we like to go and just basically veg and just let all this either process through stuff or turn our brains off and just go to a quiet place and just let all just kind of seep out and 
either work through the issues because we that's just how our brains work. Uh, so if we've got a, an issue with work or our spouse or kid, whatever that is, uh, that's where we go to just kind of sit there and just process through it and veg it out. Um, I will offer one more, uh, which will be slightly embarrassing for me. Well, not that. Nah, it's not even embarrassing for me, uh, but offer a quick story. So when uh, Brandy and I first started uh, dating and uh, then we uh, moved in together. Yes, we lived in sin for uh, a couple years before we officially. I know, I know, I know. She hates, oh, she, God, she hates me talking. I used to, I used to call her my. I used to call her my common law wife and oh my <laughs> God, she hated that so much. Still does. Um, but uh, I, I got up one at one point and, uh, and this was again, earlier on in our relationship. So this will make more sense as I tell the story. And uh, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I got up and I, and I, I left, I, I think we we're in the bedroom or in the, in the living room, whatever. And I, and I, got up and I, and I uh, went to um, like the bedroom and then she followed me kind of talking to me. And I'm like, I talked to her a little bit and then I'm like, okay, well then I go uh, over into uh, the uh, dining room, uh, which, you know, no guy goes in the dining room if he has to. She's not um, catching the hit here. And, yeah, and she follows me talking to me. And then um, I'm like, all right. And then I walk out into uh, the garage and, and I go through the laundry room and then I go into the garage and <laughs> She walks in. I'm like, honey, I got a fart. <laughs> Can you give me 30 seconds to let this thing rip? It's killing me right now. We had Mexican. Can you do it? And she's like, oh. she's like, oh, my God. And she learned a very valuable lesson that day. Oh, when yeah. I, and, and again, well, then, you know, actually, uh, years later, she made the and the girl. OK, this is a. Either a set, or this is a woman thing that the girls need to listen on if you ever want it to stay a certain way. Never give your man the pass to fart around you because once that pass is given, it's on and it will be everywhere. Yeah. But uh, earlier on, I was trying to be a gentleman and not scare her off. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, that's the that's the one of those uh, men need their quiet time. And yeah, we do. That's why we will play. We'll turn on a, like I, I played uh, uh, zombies uh, for for years. I uh, just recently quit due to some uh, stuff going on in the uh, in the real world. Uh, but I would sit there and I play zombies that I, I I mean, I play the exact same game and just sit there for like an hour or so. That is me just letting all the BS of the world just drain away. That's video games. That's why guys play video games. It's problem solving. You turn your brain off. If you get guys that you chat with when you're doing it, it's entertainment. And it's just the way that we relax. That's And that's something that women have to understand. Guys have to have that. If we're not, we go a little psycho. If we don't yeah. have that, I mean, we let that build up too long. And ladies, sometimes we're getting our quiet time away from you. We, you know, we want to be nice. We want to, you know, you, you've done something or said something or did whatever. We want to get away to say, you know what? We don't want to yell or get mad or, or say something that we're going to later irritated. regret. Yep. You were irritated by something, whatever that is. And we do get irritated. We get away from y'all. Let it just drain away so that when we come back, we're like, hey, OK, honey. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you, uh, you know, called my my transformer a dumb truck. I'm OK with that, you know. It, that takes a long time for me, but that's one of the things that we do. Anyway, that so I would say 110% uh, quiet time is a must for men. I just don't think there's any man that would disagree with you right now. Well said, sir. So um, yeah, one, one of the things that I talk about a lot of times when I'm talking with both uh, couples in the mm -hmm. same room is, um, you know, his his time alone, because it's oftentimes something that gets brought up by her. She'll say that she feels a certain way because he doesn't pay attention to her, doesn't talk to her, things like that. Yeah. His counter argument is obviously everything that you just said. You know, he's like, look, look, this is not a I don't want to be around you. I don't love you thing. This is a I've got to decompress. I've got to sharpen the saw. Right. I, I, I need to turn my brain off kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so that being said, ladies, if you're watching, if you're listening, um, understand men, we absolutely need our space. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we don't love you. We don't like you. We don't want you. We don't things like that. Um, there is some truth to the fact that uh, there are times where we just have to kind of get away. Um, men, generally speaking, are not as social as women are. And women are. Bah, 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 and the, you guys are very, very social creatures. You can't you can't feel like you have a fulfilling life if you're not social around people. Men could literally go into a cabin in the woods 
mm-hmm. off the grid and for the most part be just fine yeah. not being around that many people compared to women. So, you know, you have to understand that um, after a long day of fighting the world and men having to deal with the diplomacy at work and the BS at work and all these things and fighting traffic, I'm not saying women don't do the same thing, but I will tell you this, men men really get wrapped up in um, in the careers because we understand that the buck stops with us. Yeah. Women, for the most part, when they're in relationships, you know, there's always a small little comfortableness about the fact that if something happened with life or she did it to herself, the job gets lost. the The family doesn't doesn't always fall apart. You know, right. yeah. um, there's there's a there's a safety net called your husband, your boyfriend, your fiance. When you're the husband, when you're the boyfriend, when you're the fiance, who's your safety net? You know, there really isn't one. You know, there one and. Sometimes women will say, well, and I we know his, it and we know it. And, and <laughs> that's women the thing. Sometimes, women will sometimes say, well, I'm his safety net. That's what the partnership is, is like. OK, you know, there's there, there's some slight truth to that. But let's just be honest with ourselves. OK, if your man is out of work for a couple of weeks, no harm, no foul. But let that man be out of work for four weeks, six weeks because he's trying to mm-hmm. find a job in a tough market. You'll start to lose respect for your man. Oh, yeah. You know, immediately when, when you come home from work and he's sitting down watching TV, even if he cleaned the house and did everything he could, if you see him not being productive, you will look at him differently. Every man knows it. And oh, yeah. just about every man listening to this podcast has probably been through it, myself included. And it's not a good feeling. So there's an extra. My point is, is there's an extra sense of um anxiety amongst men knowing that we have to be on on our game every single day and when we come home we just want to turn the brain off that's why you'll see us watching a brainless tv like the simpsons or family guy just something that's entertainment not too complicated we're just thinking and laughing and decompressing all at once this guy in this story or this video clip i was sharing with you guys he goes out back in the dark and burns firewood and just watches it and just watches it if you guys have ever watched firewood being burned there's a there's a sense of calmness about it like watching the rain you know Mm -hmm. and that's that man's way of decompressing uh Dwayne and even myself I enjoy video games um that is a way for me it's video games to men ladies I want you to understand that it's basically like you guys uh, females watching a movie except we get to control the main character so yeah. we get to, to, to Dwayne's point, accomplish something. Yes, I know it's fake weapons and fake money and fake gold or whatever the video game calls for. But yeah. we get to achieve a goal, level up, achieve a goal, level up. That's basically what we try to do in life. That's our wiring. Yeah, that's how we are wired. Achieve a goal, level up. Achieve a goal, level up. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And so, and the problem or the difference is, is in real world, when your character dies, you're, you die for real, right? Now I don't mean like literally die metaphorically, like if your character fails, then you're out of work and that sets you back weeks or months or in some really bad mistakes, years, perhaps in a video game. If your character fails or dies, you just restart the game or restart the chapter, whatever it is. So there's it's it's nice for men to have that safety net because it's the only time we have that safety net. Think about it, ladies. If men go through life without a safety net in the real world, when we when we play video games, if we fail or don't achieve a goal, we have a safety net, and it's nice for us to have that. Yeah. In psychology, don't expect a lot of women to understand or believe that, but if you can kind of wrap your head around it, you'll kind of understand that it's not an insult for men to want uh, isolation. They actually need it. So um, one more thing. I want to give, give a couple shot shout outs. Uh, welcome back, XL Pro. Saw mm-hmm. you a couple weeks ago. Welcome back. Um, Aaron, always good to see you. My boy, Jesse Harmon, just logged on. Appreciate you guys. Um, this, If you guys are just logging on, what we're doing here is we're talking about a couple harsh truths about men that all women should know. And we're kind of gonna we're kind of grilling Dwayne a little bit to see what he thinks is true, what he thinks is not true. And Ooh, I want you guys to... Look! Look at that bicep. Damn, not bicep. bad for someone who doesn't work out. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I have a feeling you're pushing up the bicep. I know I'm doing that. Yeah, do that. Yeah, there we go. 
But um, I want you guys in the comments section to also sound off as well. If you think yeah. that Dwayne's off, if you think he's dead on, go ahead and put your your thoughts and comments in there, and, and I'll read them off. But uh, let's move on to the second one. So number a, a, a number number two, uh, number two harsh truth about men that women should know. Dwayne, do you think this is true or not? Right. Boys need their bros also. There's um there's a theme, you know, that is present in another, another revelation that guys would sometimes rather be with friends than their own guy friends than, their, than with women. It's nothing against women. No. Um, it's just um, but but you know, if you choose to deprive men uh, of the others in their lives, men will begin to resent you for it. So some girls will ask their guys, their husbands, their boyfriends, can I come along with you? Whenever I run into this situation where there's a female complaining about her male, where he likes to go out with the guys and she's mad that she can't come with him, or he says, hey, I'm going to go go out with the guys and we're going to do a guy thing. I say to her, picture your boyfriend asking to come shopping with you and your girlfriends. How would you feel about that? And she goes, oh, well, I never really thought about it like that. So, uh -huh. you know, so this begs the question, Dwayne, in your opinion, do you think that guys need their guy friends or bros need their, their bros and be around them too? Do you think that's the same as uh, men and women? Women, uh, women, men, yeah, hundred and ten percent, and I and I would say equally uh, for the ladies to have lady only friends. Good, I would say good quality. I mean, I it's one of those like you know I've been around the block enough to know that uh, not all guy friends are created equal. I mean, you have the the sphere. I would say if you could get around your nucleus of uh, guy friends, the ones that are going to be you know the supportive Buster Balls. Uh, you know, the guy is shorter than five foot five for for you. What's that now? The guys below five foot five for you, um, what's his name? Your buddy R Richie. Richie, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Now, like, yeah new full disclosure: friends. he's not short than five foot five. If he <laughs> if he heard us say that, he'll be pissed off. He's gonna come in this come in the chat <laughs> section and start insulting people. Okay, he's already insulted my my hairline a uh, couple weeks ago. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, guys, they need that, you know, bro time, just like girls need girl time. And again, healthy relationships across the board, you need to have you uh, together time, separate time, and then time with uh, same, uh, same uh, bio biological yeah. folks. And even, you know, uh, with opposite uh, sex, you know, uh, friends, you know, have an amount of that. And it all, again, it, it all depends on the relationship and, and uh, different things there, but definitely without question being around uh, people, you know, friends of the, of the same gender um, being, having that bro time and having girl time where you can go out and just cut loose and have fun. And, and, I mean, I'm fortunate that, you know, Brandy's very red pilled. So, and the way I've always been is I've been, what you see is what you get, no matter who, you know, no matter who I'm around. So if I, if she were to go out with me, I would say whatever I would say with or without her. Um, and, and that scares her sometimes, but having, uh, yeah, time with your friends to go out and do guy stuff and be a guy that is, that, that and that's an, and that comes back. That, re that return on investment, let, you know, letting that happen is going to be great for your relationship, your together time. It makes that even better. Um, and then, I mean, think about the base you're putting, you know, you're saying, you know, put the guy's balls on a shelf and allow him to go out. And, you know, it's like, what does that say to the guy? And then again, but the op the, the people that do that, the opposite, it usually isn't true. So the girl, you know, if she wants to go out with her girlfriends and do responsible things, not be a hoe and not go to the clubs and all that nonsense, uh, you know, do appropriate stuff. What if the guy were to say, no, oh my, the, you know, the world would end, but yeah, I would say to answer the question, 110%. Yes. That, that yep. needs to happen for a million reasons. I think, it, I think it's very healthy. And I think that you said it well, whenever you start off the, um, the conversation with, yes, I believe guys should hang out with their guy friends, girls should hang out with their girlfriends. And then you threw in the caveat, assuming that they're hanging out with the right people. Right. And that's, that's the, you couldn't have said it any better. So yes, I, I'm, I'm a big, big advocate of my woman hanging out with her girlfriends. I think it's healthy. I think it's uh, something that's needed, um, you know, and guys need it too. I will find, I, I find that women would want to do that a little more than guys might want to do that. That's fine. We are different people, different mm -hmm. creatures to the Wayne's point though. The caveat is, is whom, she's hanging out with 
whom he's yeah. hanging out with. I have oftentimes said that single women keep women single. Yep. Well, the same thing could apply and has applied for men as well. Oh, yeah. It's not as it's it doesn't work as equally, though. Like if let me give you an example. If if my female, my if my chick hung out with four single friends, it's only a matter of time before my woman starts to get some stinking thinking and yep. starts wondering how green the grass is. If I hang out with four single dudes, guys are not trying to talk you out of being in a relationship. Right. When you have hard times, they're usually trying to help you work the problem. And it's not they're trying to talk you out of staying in the relationship, you know, so there is a little bit of a difference. However, I will say this, ladies, I'll give you this advice because there's there's definitely some truth to you want to watch out who your guys hang out with. And examples mm -hmm. will be that the old adage of who you hang out with is who you become is obviously true. There's some transferability yeah. there. So if your guy, if your man is hanging out with a guy who, you know, does drugs, smokes weed all the time. You're going to want to watch out for that. You're going to want to probably limit that interaction because you don't want him to start smoking weed all the freaking time either. If right. you're hanging out with uh, some guys who never have jobs, who never are ambitious, you just know that your man can take his foot off the gas because he's not around successful, ambitious men. Now, right. compare, compare that to compare your man hanging out with four guys who are ambitious couple guys are starting to start businesses. Other guys are trying to climb the corporate ladder. These guys are hungry, right? You think your man's going to take his foot off the gas and, 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 and just be loose with his words and stuff as far as like coming out with talking about how stressed he is and things like that. No, because mm -hmm. those other four guys are not going to allow, you know, BS mindsets because right. men want to be around other men who are successful if your man is hanging out with four guys, though, that are really not achieving much, then he can go ahead and complain about how stressful he is because he's not going to be ridiculed for it because these guys are not out there sli slaying the right, dragon yeah. themselves, right? So you yeah. do want to kind of watch out for it. You also want to watch out for the playboy in the group, meaning that if your guy's hanging out with a Chad and that Chad loves to drink and um, go to strip clubs all the time. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to try to get your dude to go to a strip club from time to time. And then your dude's no. going to have to lie to you about it. We know where all this goes. So there is some, there is some regulation for lack of better words. There's some, there's some, you know, uh, conversation that needs to happen on both sides. If you have, if, if your woman has girlfriends or your guy has guy friends that are not really meeting the mark of what your expectations are for them, you're going to yeah. want to watch out for that. But the lion's share of the time, it's an extremely healthy thing. So um, okay. Guys, guys, gals in the chat room, what do you guys think? Do you think that hanging out with, you think guys hanging out with guy friends, girls hanging out with girlfriends are good or bad? What do you guys think? Um, I know, I know one of the guys that I hang out, I've hung out with for 20 years is Jesse. Um, mm. what, what, I, I have a ton of fond memories with that guy hanging out at the clubs back at we used to club, getting yeah. drunk, having a good time, man. I mean, I've some of the best times of my life that guy was involved in it. As a matter of fact, Jesse. As a matter of fact, I still have the video. Oh, oh. Of you drunk off your ass after shades. And we parked my car across the street at the, uh, what was it, a Walmart or a Kmart or something? It was a big, huge parking lot because the club parking lot was full. And this is back when they had those mechanical horses where you put the quarter in and you ride back and forth. Right. Jesse Hart. <laughs> I've got a video of Jesse, the guy in the comment section, drunk, riding a horse, drunk off his ass, mimicking a horse, and then he has to pee, and he pees while he's riding the horse, and there's a stream going. It is the funniest thing. I've got the video. Jesse, watch your mouth because if you say something in the comment section, uh, I'll play that video live on air. I swear to God, I'll play live. No, I'm just joking. I love you. But give I me the I, video. I, I do have that video, though. I swear it's on this computer right now. I have it somewhere on this computer. But uh, uh, those are some great, fun memories. Um, I, I've got um, – we used to also – I'll give you <laughs> – Yeah. 
<laughs> Jesse, you know what other video I got of you also? Remember when we used to go to Denny's after the clubs? And um, we, we, Dwayne, we went to Denny's religiously after the club. Mm. And um, there's like a back section in Denny's um, where the yep. doors close. It's not open wherever. Right. Probably for parties or big groups or whatever. They knew us so well that that was our VIP spot. We like we we like had a VIP. You heard VIP at Denny's. <laughs> Swear to God, and like like the waitresses loved us. They knew us by name. We always tip well. Um, I think this is back when Jesse was bartending and all this. So so we we were all pretty good tippers. And yeah. I I um I don't know what we were doing. We were probably, oh. pro- probably buzzed. What? And I literally Show had a video. Show. Show the Denny's one. Yeah. So, and and it's on VHS. That's how old this is. It's, uh, it's, it's, me, I can convert it. It's What's the one with the little, the little tiny VHS? What are those called? Remember those? Digital eight, yeah, digital eight ones. Yeah. So yeah. that, that cause, cause we had the camcorder that you like, you had to do this, like right, look through yeah. it, you know? So I'm, I'm recording Jesse. He, there's a, there was this uh, porter named uh, Nelson, Nelson. And he, Nelson could barely speak English, but he, <laughs> Nelson loved us because we always picked on him. The dude was probably five foot five, maybe a buck forty five, and we were just these huge dudes, you know. And um, we used to push Nelson around a little bit, and he used to push us back, and he he'd get up in our face, and yeah. we, just all banter, good good healthy banter. We weren't picking on him. Yeah, uh, bro, just bro shit. Healthy. This is bro, bro shit. stuff right Complete there. Yeah, bro shit. Like Nelson yeah. would make sure that he worked on Saturday night, so that way he could <laughs> hang out with us and, and pick on us, and we pick on him. Yeah, Jesse Jesse rough, roughs up Nelson a little bit, takes Nelson's apron off, puts Nelson's apron on, takes Nelson's mop. And then goes into the uh, employee kitchen and just starts mopping the floor. I'm following Jesse with a camcorder. People who Jesse not, Jesse doesn't know are looking at him like, does, does he work here? Does he work here? <laughs> Jesse starts mopping the floors and stuff. I'm laughing so hard I can't breathe. And you can hear me on the videotape just <laughs> laughing like a freaking child. Jesse, Jesse goes in deep into the into the uh, kitchen where they have this huge machine where they where they wash the glasses and yeah. bowls and stuff. Yeah. And you put them in trays and you push them through this like machine. <clears throat> There's an employee there that's literally washing dishes. And Jesse puts his hand on the person's shoulder and says, watch out. I'll take it from here. And the person looks at Jesse like, I, who, I don't know who this guy is. He peels off. Jesse starts washing dishes. It's just hilarious, man. I've got that. I've got that video as well. Just, you just gotta send it to me. I will convert it uh, to digital and then put it out there for the world to see. Unless we, the right price is is paid. Yeah, 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 Jesse. So, so I'm I'm gonna give you Dwayne's Cash App for you to pay him to not post that post that video because I'm posting that video. There but uh, but yeah. So I mean, how can really someone argue that hanging out with your guy friends is a bad thing? Because in most yeah. most cases, it's just. It's just a really good, good thing, uh, especially, you know, also with the females, hanging out with the females. You know, we got to be social creatures. Yeah. Um, number three, number three, harsh truth about men that women should harsh know. Truth. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call this one, um, uh, take up a hobby, you know, t- t- take up a hobby. Okay. One, um, one feeling sweeping the discourse is that females, um, other haves don't have enough hobbies or play games or enough sports, you know, guys need to, to need convincing to guys don't really need convincing to play around the golf or, you know, go for a run or, you know, um, just hang out, play video games, things like that. But right. I, I've seen a lot of times one of the common things that guys will complain about about her is that she doesn't have hobbies. So um, I remember this one guy saying, hey, I want my partner also to have her own har- her own hobbies, her own friends. Um, and this guy had just basically came out and said that if, he, if, he, if she doesn't understand that, then we're not a good match in the first place. That's how right. important it was for him. So, Dwayne, do you agree that um, f- females, the girlfriend, the wife, should have her own hobbies as well? Um, it may not be a round of golf. It may not be hanging out and drinking beer at the for watching a football with the guys. But right. do you, but do you agree that females should have hobbies? Yeah, yeah. It, it, that goes along with the you know guys having their time, girls having their time by themselves. But uh, having a hobby, there's like four or five different layers uh, to the purpose of a hobby, and, and some is just keeping your brain going. 
learning new things. You're not getting stagnant uh, in, in your life. I mean, because, well, you want your partner to, you know, to have something behind the eyes. So when you talk to them, you know, you can actually have a conversation or, or do, you know, whatever you're trying to do in life uh, with your partner. Uh, but yeah, women having hobbies, I think that's, yeah, hugely important. Just like guys should have uh, hobbies. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I would say, yeah, women should have hobbies. Yeah. Uh, and, and it should be, it, it should be expand their mind, it should be their downtime, it should be something they enjoy, it should be, and it goes along, some of the hobbies like, you know, go along with uh, their overall nature of being caretakers and, you know, uh, family, the hobbies would probably kind of go along the lines of that, you know, creating something, nurturing, you know, I would say it sounds like gardening would be a, a, an example of that. Yeah. They're caretakers, they're creating something, they're, you know, making something pretty, they're doing that. But yeah, I'd say definitely women should have hobbies. Yeah. And, and, it and makes and them I interesting. Noticed, I, I think you're right. And, and I've noticed that a lot of times men will have hobbies, but women will not. Women are social. They'll get out and talk with their friends, but actually having hobbies. Um, I think you alluded to, to Brandy having a hobby. W weren't you talking about her having a hobby just a few moments ago? Uh, well, she does uh, uh, rotary. She does a lot of uh, uh, philanthropic work out in the community. Yeah. Uh, actually, like yesterday, uh, and I get tired even here. Or, and I say tired, I mean physically, not like, oh, God, I get tired. But I get I got tired hearing how energetic and how fast, she, I mean, how much she does. Like So yesterday, she woke up at like 6 or 7, went to a, uh, a group, uh, a save, let's see, was it Save Our Seniors? Uh, and it's basically seniors that they're they're too old to take care of their property. And she went out there, mowed their lawn, weed eated, uh, got all the vines off uh, this person's house, did all this stuff for them uh, for a couple hours. Then she went to the Lions Club, which is a kind of a rotary. It's a you know a, a club of uh, guys that help out in the community and put together and ran a and, and participated in a uh, event for them to uh, help get the message out or whatever that yeah. that was. But spent like six, seven, eight hours out in the Texas heat uh, doing that. I mean, she's very involved in the community, and that's one of the many things. One of the many things I love about her is she cares about people uh, and does a lot of, you know, tries to help people out and is, you know, good person and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, she hobbies, yeah, yeah. And, I, and you, you I, know, um, we've talked in previous podcasts, and this kind of aligns just with what you and I were saying a few weeks ago in podcast where we talk about the differences between men and women and um, and the way our brains think, the things that we, um, you know, are focused on um, also influence the type of jobs we get into. And what mm -hmm. I said a few weeks ago was that men um, are focused on things and women are focused on people. And so that's why you see a lot of men in STEM and you see a lot of women in um, customer service and nursing, nursing and, and yeah. things that have to deal with people. Well, look mm -hmm. how that correlates to hobbies, right? Men are competitive by nature and we like things. So golf, race cars, uh, baseball for me, um, you know, video games, things like that. Things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Brandy, all people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All people. Yeah, She's we helping out the community. Yeah, we're both members of our uh, Rotary. I handle the website and technical stuff because that's kind of my passion. It's a hobby we do together. And she, you know, uh, runs, she herds kittens basically with the Rotary teams, uh, getting them to do service projects in the community to help out uh, the city and, well, the state, but the, our, our city. Um, but yeah, we do those things together. But we, there's a lot of it that's separate. Like she'll, you know, say, hey, we need to have XYZ for the website or we need to do, we need to figure out how to technically do this or do that and she bounces ideas off me i mean we have hundreds of conversations weekly about just those type of things alone and that's one of the one of the things that we communicate on that's that's one of the many things that brings us together is we you know she'll ask, hey how do i do this or you know I, I, we've got 500 people that need to figure out a way to uh pay to help this family out how do we do that i'm like oh well you do this this and this and this i set it up give her the information she runs with it and it 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 was a cohesive. Uh, it was a match made in heaven. I don't know if uh, he's being funny here or not. Cooking, cleaning, yard work are all good hobbies, <laughs> ladies. Uh, I, I mean, tongue in cheek, but no, I would say yes. I mean, those are uh, things that they can be hobbies. Um, I mean, some unfortunately, it is being looked at a lot of times as hobbies. Um, that uh, I mean, now a lot of men are 
you know, better cooks than women because of just the change in society over the years. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it can be. I mean, yeah, sure can. Um, knowing Jesse, he's probably throwing stabs out there, but uh, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's hard to, I, I have to see him when he says it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's one of those, there's a lot of nonverbal communication that I'm in tune with when, when it comes to that guy. Right. But uh, good morning, Todd. And good morning. There's my mom. My mom's on. Oh. My mom just logged on. Hi. Hi, Miss Matt. Mom, I haven't called you in a while. I apologize. I still love you. I'm still alive. I'm still safe. Okay. So there you go. Um, if you guys are just tuning in, what we're doing here today is we're talking about 10 hearts truths about men that all women should know. And we're kind of, uh, we're kind of putting the spotlight on Dwayne today to see how well he's been learned up over the last, um, you know, quarter or whatever. And, and kind of giving him some fire questions to see if he feels that the polling that has been done is accurate, slightly accurate, things like that. So, um, we just talked about whether or not females should have some sort of hobby, um, mm -hmm. or because a lot of times females don't have as many hobbies as men tend to have hobbies that kind of runs right back into the next one. And, um, this one right here is, mm -hmm. um, a poll done. Do you feel that is accurate? Um, and I'm referring to men here. Okay. Do you men. feel it's accurate, Dwayne, that isolation is abuse? Now, here's what I mean by that. I've got friends who have become involved with controlling girlfriends, controlling wives. Ooh. And, um, you know, there are tales for a friend in this kind of situation, you know, never coming out. Or if he does, he's constantly messenger or messenger girl oh, on the God. phone calling. You know, he's kind of um, <laughs> got that guy friend who's reluctant to really commit to anything. You know, mm -hmm. hey, dude, come on out. We're going to go play golf, you know, over at Seven Springs. You know, oh, yeah, I'll let you know kind of a thing, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's even a, there's even a person that I know that um, that has uh, gone as far as saying that it's actual abuse. So, um, I mean, naturally it can go both ways. Right. Obviously. Right. But um, do you feel that a and since we're talking about men, we'll kind of stick to this. Right. Do you feel that a um, woman who likes her man to be around her uh, the lion's share of the time? could be deemed as um, abuse because the topic is isolation is abuse. Thoughts? Um, well, I was triggered as you were talking. Uh, not, <laughs> not my current wife, one of my previous wives. Wow. Um, actually, one and a half, almost two of them. Um, but uh, yeah, 500%. Um, uh, that, it would be a huge red flag for a potential intervention um, from, from the bros uh, to, to come in. Uh, but yeah, if, if the woman does not want her man to have hobbies or go out in public or hang with good quality other men, um, that I, I would definitely, that is abuse. I mean, that is emotional abuse at the very least uh, because she's basically, uh, and again, for the ladies that are going, that are, you know, snubbing their nose, think about this in the reverse. If I just change the genders, you know, if a guy's like, okay, you've got a, oh boy, I know a a few people are listening. I know people. Are, I know people are going to be triggered. Um, I know of somebody that in their previous marriage, um, the guy she was required to call to be on the cell phone with him as she went to work in in the parking lot was GPS, and then when hung up because the office she worked in, uh, you weren't allowed to have cell phones. She had thirty seconds, maybe forty five seconds, if it was a good day to get to her office phone and call from the office phone. So caller ID showed that she was in the office. Wow. That would be uh, an example of someone I know. I um, had, I, I had uh, something happen just this week. Um, three, four days ago, there was a, um, uh, a couple things on my work schedule that I noticed that we were a little short staffed at the latter part of the day. And mm -hmm. I had, you know, three or four people kind of working the morning shift and only one person working the PM shift, the evening shift. So I had a conversation with a couple of guys at work and said, Hey, I need you guys to step up. I'll let you guys decide which one of you guys want to switch your morning for the PM shift. Mm -hmm. um, my, one, one, of the, one of my colleagues, I'll keep his name private for respect. He says, I'll do it. So the very first day that he worked that he all he did was come in an hour later and stay an hour later. That's all it was. All right. It wasn't a huge big deal. Yeah, isn't that, okay. So it's it's in that last hour that he normally is gone that he's now there, and the phone rings. I happen to answer the phone. It's a female asking for that guy, 
And I said, hey, he's with someone right now. Can I take a message? And the person on the phone, she says, no, 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 I'll, I'll just call back. And when I was hanging up the phone, I noticed that the caller ID was a familiar first name. And then it dawned on me, that's the first name of his wife. And so I didn't really think a whole lot of it, but he comes back inside from helping someone. Um, I tell him, you had a phone call, not sure who it was, this, that, and the other. He's on his personal cell phone. He hangs the phone. He's all flustered, know, been, flustered, been out of shape, off center. And it, and it ended, up, ended up being his wife that who had called that I spoke with. And she thought that he was out drinking and cheating on him because he never works that late. And she thought that he was lying to her that he had to work late, but he was really out banging chicks. And I thought to myself, holy cow, man. I mean, I'm not saying that this woman is the devil. I'm not saying that she's, um, I, I, for all I know, maybe he gave her a good reason to. I, I, I don't know. That's always the first question to ask in those situations. But yeah, uh, barring that. Don't know. You know. I have no idea, but I will tell you this. Either way, not a good look, not healthy. I think that if you try to isolate your significant other, there's right. just no that, that doesn't end in a that 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 streak never ends well. Ends, it, it doesn't end uh, with with going over the rainbow. It ends on on a dead end. So you know you really want to be careful that you're not locking arms with a, a man or a woman who has those isolation tendencies. Dwayne mm -hmm. will tell you from experience. I will tell you from experience. A lot of people here on the chat will tell you from experience. It just doesn't feel good. You always feel like you're, you know, you're oppressed. You feel like the thumbs on you, and you feel like you always have to check in because you have a jealous or controlling significant other. Um, the last thing I'll say about that too is, is if if you are going through it and your spouse is, um, you know, making you feel that way, um, if it's if it's not warranted, you know, um, you might want to you might want to have that conversation with them and. Um, and potentially move on to the next but um if it is warranted take responsibility because oh, yeah. because if you if you got caught stepping out of your relationship stepping out of your marriage and the significant other now is um expected you know, head on a swivel kind of a thing yeah. you know you can't point fingers i mean you know this is this is all self-inflicted so you know, there's always a story behind everything, but assuming that there's no drastic thing that has happened and your spouse or significant other is isolating you, you you're going to want to have that conversation because it's not sustainable. Well, other and actually, you need to if that's happening, you need to be checking out the other person because okay. usually the people that are accusing and freaking out, they're the ones that are actually doing it. Yeah. You know, a thief so. is always worried about someone stealing from them. Yeah. A liar is always thinking everyone's lying to them. So very good point, Dwayne. The yeah. next one is is an, another truth that men um, that men feel that women should know about them is that men understand that looks fade over time. You know, um, men understand that. I mean, men are looking for beauty and fitness. You know, we 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 are attracted to women with our eyes first. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, we, by and large, we are, mm -hmm. but. The feeling in this polling is that the, the men are saying, even though we pick that way initially, mm -hmm. we're not naive to know that looks fade over time. And when they do, the woman has to have something other than her looks and her intimacy to keep the relationship going. Men must also consider that when choosing a partner, you know, um, love, teamwork and, you know, things like that are important. So do you feel, Dwayne? That I'm not going to ask a qu question. Do you feel that it's important for a woman to have value other than her looks and intimacy? Because I think we all agree on that. That's too easy. Yeah. I'm going to ask a, tough, a tougher question. Do you think that the majority of men understand that looks fade over time and that woman needs to have bring more to the table than just looks and intimacy? Hmm. Well, that's a good one. Because um, you're talking, I mean, you're pulling men, you know, not. You know, me personally, so there's, you know, there's the, the two things there. It all depends on who. Um, I the, the circles that I surround myself with do believe that um, the the initial youth looks uh, are what, you know, what fade over time. Because, I mean, age is age. I mean, that, that's just it. That's what happens. Um, but the men I surround myself with, they look at their partners as uh, getting more beautiful 
uh, because there is a, is a deeper type of love. If that yeah. doesn't sound too corny and hallmarky, uh, like it was funny uh, yesterday. Um, uh, my wife, <laughs> when she got back from uh, being out in the humidity and, and, and the heat and all that stuff, uh, she came through the door and you know greeted her. I'm like, I ain't touching because you're all sweaty, although. But uh, I looked at it and she reminded me of when we. I took a picture of her when we were at a, a one of the kids' football games uh, earlier on in our relationship. And she looked the exact same way. Her hair, her face, everything looked the exact same way as that picture. And I remember that. And I, and I, you know, I said, you know, you remind me of the picture that was taken back then. And she just kind of gave me this look like, ah. But it, I, I, I mean, I would say the guys I surround myself with, uh, if, if those are the kind of people being pulled, we realize that certain types of looks, that youthful whatever. But it, if if a woman brings something more to the table than just looks then um, we're more than fine with it. Yeah. That, that would be my, pers- like my personal opinion, I, as far as the guys that were pulled, I don't know, did you do it in Media Magazine? If you're getting the information from like Media Magazine or, you know, uh, Bros and Hoes, uh, Inc. Oh, or whatever. Bros and Hoes Weekly. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it all depends on where you got this poll. But I would say the guys I've always surrounded myself with, um, you know, you're, the, 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 the love that you would have for your significant other over time increases and changes uh, to where, like, when that youthful, twenty-year-old, uh, you know, uh, tight fit, whatever, um, we we understand that there's passage of time, but you love your spouse even more as they as they change and you grow together, and they because they do hopefully they do bring more to the table uh, than just you know physical intimacy or uh, or looks, yeah, and that's why it's so important to have hobbies, to have to, to conversation, and to build a life with that person. Because you you know, I, I I mean, I can honestly say that my wife is you know prettier to me now uh, than when we you know first met. I mean, you know, she was a solid 11, uh, 12 when I first met her, uh, and then over time she's just gotten prettier and prettier. And I'm not saying that because she's, you know, holding a knife to my neck, but um, <laughs> she's not on the other side of the door. Getting ready I'm not to go. saying that because she's off camera with a gun, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, and that's, I mean, for the ladies, if you do it right, if, if you do the things the way you're supposed to, and you have to acknowledge that reality and age are going to come in. But if you are a good companion for your spouse, you're going to have a great relationship if you picked well. I mean, guys, they can be dummies as well. Um, but if you pick right, and that's the importance of picking right, not sleeping with everything you find, um, you do it right. You're going to have a, he's going to look at you, uh, with more love and caring and, and, uh, Hey, Hey time than when you first met. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the, um, the, the big thing to add in here and you actually alluded to it is that, um, seeing more than looks is something that comes along with wisdom. You know, I think if you were to poll different generations, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, you'll start to see from the younger age looks mean almost everything and substance means not so much. And then when you start getting to the older years, the looks start to mean a lot less and the substance starts to mean a lot more. And that comes with wisdom, right? Because when you're in your 20s, um, I think that most men are not looking to settle down right now. Um, Although there are some, when you get in your Mm -hmm. thirties, you've been through, um, someone said it on the chat, something about, you know, um, you know, woman has to give more, let's see where that chat was. Uh, Could have swore someone had said something about uh, women. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, when it, when when you're in your younger years, you're all, you're, you're looking for the, the hot chick and things like that. And what you realize um, is that, Oh, it's it was Todd. Todd said some of the most attractive people have got ugly souls. Sorry, that's, oh, yeah. that's the one I was. It was his very last chat. So, yeah. um, what 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 he's what he's probably alluding to is when Todd. I don't know how old Todd is, but you know, assuming that he's thirty or forty or fifty years old, when he was in his twenties, he probably dated a lot of really good looking women, like 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 we all tried to do. And mm-hmm. um, and I will I will say for myself, I dated some beautiful women and they did have some pretty ugly souls. You know, they were, you know, some of the hottest women that I've ever dated were um, on drugs, alcoholics, yeah. you know, uh, drama Ooh, queens, people. just, you know, just my God. I mean, it's it's a good thing you are a solid freaking 10 because your personality is a four, you know, yeah. and uh, crazy um, matrix. And there's also a reason why there's that old adage, that old joking where. I, I'm probably going to butcher the, the the saying, but 
um, behind every beautiful woman is a man who's fed up with her shit, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, whatever joke that <laughs> was, right? That's it. Because, yeah. because whether she's average looking or below average looking, or she's a walking stunner, um, you know, if if the soul ain't right, if she's a headache, if she's uncooperative, if she's masculine, if she's combative. You know that ain't gonna last. It ain't worth it. It ain't, yeah. it ain't gonna worth it. And I've said this before, and I and I I know it to be true with myself for 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 sure. Most men, including myself, I will be I will go down in looks to go up in cooperation. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, um, if 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 she is a stone cold nine eight nine ten, of course my eyes, both heads on my body are going yeah. But do. Uh, my brain and my heart are going red flag here because she probably gets a ton of attention. She probably has a social media, um, you know, it's going to be done with trouble. Or, you know, it's, it's just the juice ain't worth the squeeze. And, you yeah. know, if you're looking for something substantial, if you're looking for long term, then um, the higher the you, you lower your probability of finding wife material when she's too hot because the world has turned her into a person where she's a little more entitled than you probably are going to be able to deal with. I don't right. know. I hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. I hope I'm not jumbling, but you know, um, I, I'd rather go for a six, seven or eight in that category and looks because uh, those women in my experience tend to be more well-rounded, good women. And I have no problem living my rest of my life with a, with a six or seven and in the inside, she's at eight, nine, 10, no doubt about it. Um, oh, yeah. When I was 20, I probably would go for no deal on that. Now that I'm in my 40s, absolutely. Because <laughs> men who have been through a few tough relationships um, and we know how hard men take breakups compared mm -hmm. to women, because when women break up, they could be online and have a thousand likes in one hour. Guys will go months before they'll find another partner. Um, right. They don't have the same level. It's not a, it's not an even playing field. So men take breakups a lot harder. Um, so when, when it comes to picking a long-term relationship, I think that um, women definitely have to bring more than just their looks and just, you know, oh, yeah. the intimacy part of it. They really have to be um, supportive and inspirational and um, cooperative and want to build with that man for him to really say, yes, let's, let's, let's be monogamous. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've got about, I don't know, I think we're about halfway done, something like that. Okay. okay. So here's one. Um, I already know what Dwayne's going to say on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyhow. <laughs> Do you feel that when a woman, um, that a woman, more women need to fess up when they mess up, you know, meaning the idea of oh. women, <laughs> I already know the idea, um, is that women really need to be more accountable and um in today's modern era it's very prominent that most women in today's um, modern era uh, have a hard time or lack accountability yeah. um, do you feel that more women need to be willing to hold themselves accountable for their actions um and and things like that so i'm just gonna leave it i could go on i don't need to go on and draw this out Dwayne's already got an answer rock and roll ladies i'm just gonna talk to you for a second here uh, ladies listen if, if you screw up, whatever that is, just own up to it immediately. Uh, I, speaking for me, and I'm, I'm going to assume I'm like most guys. We, if you go, you know what? I screwed up. I'm sorry. Let's move on. We'll just go, all right, all right, and we move on. Again, it depends on what the, the, the mess up is. If it's, you know, making dinner or, you know, goofing up uh, laundry or, uh, you know, wrecking the car. Well, okay, wrecking the car depends on the car, but, you know, that. Uh, if you're cheating, cheating or something like that, that's yeah, that's going to be. There's not going to be recovery from that right. one. But for you know the, the the smaller things, or you get into an argument, and and, and obviously you were the wrong one. Uh, just fess up to it. I'm sorry. Say the words. I'm sorry. Don't roll your eyes and move on. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's got to be in the DNA. Boy, you're going to launch me off here. Um, they. We will not admit they're wrong. Oh I don't know what the hell is. You can I can have like videotape and go look look. look this is you crashing video the car. evidence of you screwing up. Yeah, and and you know, and, and then, then she'll say, "Well, you shouldn't have been sitting there videotaping you anyways without my permission. You're the one that's wrong because you videotaped me without my permission." It's like kind of I feel scared. I'm like, no, I've been through relationships before, but yeah, the, uh, again. The, 
if you just say I'm I screwed up, I'm sorry, let's move on, you know, or not even say that this, I screwed up, I'm sorry. 99% of the time, the guy's going to go, all right. And then, then it's gone. Then we don't even think about it. But if you don't, it festers because we're, we have, we we're like solution oriented and we are working through the process. Like, well, you know, she's not admitting it. Maybe I got something wrong. Um, you know, maybe, you know, aliens came down and did the, I mean, that's, and then we just get madder and madder and it just festers. Same thing. And the poor ladies lose their minds. Same thing with y'all. I mean, when something's bugging you, little things like if I leave my underwear on the on the ground, or I fling my underwear in your face in the shower like I always do, or I, you know, forget the oh oh well, I I think I've already I think I told this story. Are we have a little dance. You get the shower in the with the underwear on. Why are you? Uh, I don't I don't get well, it. I don't, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm not you know average size. No. How, how, um, cold, how cold is the water in your shower? It's in, very in, cold. I don't, don't want to know. Extremely <laughs> cold. Uh, no, we have a little. Uh, Bray and I have a little thing in the morning. We were both in there getting ready, getting the shower. I always you have a little thing. My door up and I fling my underwear at her. It's just a, it's our love language. Attractive. It, it is. Um, and uh, she loves that. She, she, you know what? She, she does love it. that. She loves that. She loves my uh, elephant dance or more of my, like my uh, caterpillar dance. Uh, yeah. There's, you know, we all have our, our little things that we do, but um, <laughs> with, I mean, with, <laughs> with ladies, I mean, those little things that we don't do, they build up and that's why then you lose your business and you're on top of the, you know, the the house with a, an AR and a thing of hog and dust screaming at us. It's the same for guys, but it's even even the little it's not it's little things. Just if you if you goof up, just go, you know what? I screwed this up. I broke this or I did that or I touched your transformers and I shouldn't have uh, talking to you, Brandy. Um, and <laughs> I'm joking. she knows not to touch my transformers. Um, but she or it, fess up. Yeah. I, so I would say 110 percent fess up to it. And the art for guys, the arguments over unless it's something huge, cheating, stealing all of his money. Uh, sleeping with his best friend, whatever that is. Yeah. Those are, you know, those are, uh, do not pass up. go, you know, you yeah, can't that's recover a- from those things. You know, guys, I, 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 t- I tell you, you know, um, it's not that you can't have a good relationship with a woman who doesn't think a certain way, but I would just play the odds because guys are all about the odds. We understand there's no guarantees of anything, but guys, I say you only, only mess with and deal with women who are pilled in the right way. I can't think of what pill it is. What pill oh. would that be? <gasps> the red I pill. I don't and remember exactly. Don't what be pill. fooled. <laughs> Do not be fooled by the fake red pillars. Yeah. There are yeah. a lot of them out there. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. True. True. I, I have stories. Of- yeah, there, there are definitely naysayers, right? But you, you know, it, it, I say don't even like mess with the feminist. Don't even mess oh, with the, 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 the blue pill chicks, man. Just the juice ain't worth the squeeze. It's very, very few of them get converted, and it's very hard to have a sustainable long term relationship with a woman who, um, you know, moves in that direction. That's just you know, you got do whatever you want, guys. Love who you want. I'm just saying, a woman's mindset tells you everything. Don't. Like, make sure that you're paying attention to a woman's actions and not her words. Women, Mm -hmm. their words do not match their actions. Men pay attention to her actions, not her words. That is another of many reasons why we are concerned about a woman's past. uh, Because we know that that her past is a good indicator of her future. Hell, we all manage our money that way. There's no guarantees (laughs) on the stock market. What we do is we look up, we look at how things perform in the past, and we do the best we can to indicate how they will perform in the future. Um, we do it with our own finances, so do it with your women as well. You know, if she's got a if she's got a sketchy past, guys, beware, beware. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, so how about number six? Uh, right. Gossip girls. Um, you know, it's, it's it's hard to find a girl who doesn't gossip, right? Yeah. But there is gossip, and then there is gossip. So right. a woman who is constantly dishing on uh, her best friends in her oh, most God. relationship secrets risk losing her partner's trust, in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. the behavior might be a sign that she's doing the same thing about your relationship. So right. how do you feel? Because I mean, let's be honest, women are different than men. They move differently, act differently, and they speak differently. We, 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 Dwayne, you already agreed that it's good for her to get out with her girlfriends. It's good to her for her to have hobbies. Mm-hmm. Now we both know that they're going to be, their women are interested in people and they're going to be social. Okay. Right. 
What's your thoughts on gossiping? Oh God, it's. It, it, I guess it depends on how much, what type. Um, but yeah, if if the girl spends ninety nine percent of her time gossiping, um, that's a red flag. Um, they're all about the drama. I mean, women are more prone to drama, uh, at least historically. I mean, that sadly is changing. But yeah, women uh, are more, uh, they, they like to gossip and, and get the latest tea on what's going on. There's, there's something about being in the know versus gossiping. Um, you know, being in the room where the girls are all gossiping and she's drinking it all in. And then, you know, she comes home and goes, hey, hon, did you know that Bob, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, I'm staying away from Bob because he's into, you know, or he's doing something, whatever. Or I need to have a talk with Bob because he's doing something wrong. You know, there was that. Because, again, we're more informational um then got you know gossip to the gossip uh but yeah gossip uh in the pejorative sense is bad if yeah if your woman is gossiping uh red flag because chances are she's gossiping about you that's it that's, that's it and cold hard facts in in a relationship there are going to be times situations things that happen that need to be what i call in the vault secrets that you share that you keep yeah right? Share amongst each other. Sorry. Share amongst the two of you that you right. keep amongst the two of you. And I do guys, I believe that part of our shit testing that we should do with them is give, give her a story or a situation that you wouldn't necessarily mind being put out there in the world, but right. tell her it's a secret that you don't want her to share and shit test her to see just how much she talks. Because to Dwayne's point, if a man or a woman is the kind of person that goes, hey, hey, don't don't tell anyone. But did you hear what Dwayne did last week? He did this and that and the other, blah, blah, blah. When someone comes to you and says, don't tell anyone, but right. that is a red flag that I promise you, man, if you ask her not to say anything or if you ask him not to say anything, he's probably going to go to one of his or her friends and say, hey, don't tell anyone and then share what it is you asked them not to share. So mm -hmm. if you have a partner, a pretty good shit test would be to share something with them as a test that if it got leaked out, it's not going to damage you, your character, things like that, whatever. Hell, even maybe even make something up. I know that kind of borderlines on the moral compass thing, but you know, mm -hmm. there's, but guys, I, I do believe that there are some times where you can bend or flex a little bit for the overall good, as long as the end result is not going to hurt anyone. Right. Because, um, and that might be one of those things where you might make up a small little story to see if she tells them. Because, guys, we can all agree that one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life will be you picking your spouse. That will make or break <laughs> your life. Repeat that again. <laughs> make or break <laughs> your life. And I bet you there ain't a person on this chat room. With my mother included, she's in, she's probably still logged on. That would not agree that picking the wrong wrong partner is detriment. Mm -hmm. It will set it will set you back years. And for men, because of the financial mm -hmm. hardship, it could set you back decades. Tell me, I'm lying. We all know it, right? Sometimes forever. Sometimes forever. Sometimes it's sometimes it's um, un unrecoverable. So yeah. you've got to make sure that. Um, that you're watching the red flags on some of these things. How about this one? This one's an interesting one. All right. The polling was there can be no second place. Here's what I mean. Various members of, of, of the male congregation agree that being um, undervalued makes relationships impossible. They, they feel like mm -hmm. uh, no one wants to feel like they're a second prize. Cool. I get it. Even there was even one person, one contributor <coughs> who, who compared this to a movie where the man keeps up hope for that one moment where they feel mm -hmm. suddenly, um, it, it, or suddenly they, they remember that they've been there the whole time and that she finally came around and made him a priority. And oh, you know, God, that kind of stuff, you know, that what'd you call it, Hallmarky kind of stuff? Hallmark, 16 so, Candles crap. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so here's, I'm interested in getting your take on it because I, I think everyone can agree that no one wants to feel like second place. But then if you think right. about it, there are some things that I can't hold that 
too hard because that would make me hypocritical. Here's why. Because I've often taught to never make your woman a top priority, make your purpose a priority. And then mm-hmm. women are taught, don't make a man your priority, make your kids a priority. So, you know, without sounding hypocritical, help us kind of iron this out, Dwayne. Do you feel that it's healthy or not healthy to have your significant other being second place? What was your thoughts? Well, with your, with, I mean, the way you described it is, you know, with, with men, at least we put our purpose, uh, the purpose should be at the high priority. So for example, my purpose is to provide uh, for my family. My wife is part of my family. So I'm always going to, she's always going to benefit 99.999% with me putting, taking care of my family at the highest priority. Yeah putting her first, if, if, uh, and that's where I get into the whole, you know, man leads the house thing that people misunderstand or get upset over. Uh, and I use the analogy of if I get a job offer to move to say Alaska for a million dollars a year and they're going to pay for everything. I'll never have to work again. And you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a great thing. And I sit down, I talk with her and she says, well, I'm your highest priority. We should still stay here and struggle. And, um, and I asked, well, what's your reasoning? She's like, well, I like the, the Michael store up the road. And I have like a friend or two that lives here. I mean, the, you know, me putting, if I would, if I were to put her number one, I would then go, Oh, well, of course we're not going to take the million dollar, make everybody's lives easier. And, and the, you know, take care of the family. I'm going to put your needs because you have this one friend that you probably won't be friends with in six months uh, at the, the highest priority. Um, and so when I say putting your, the purpose at the highest priority uh, and her being second, that that's what I you know that's what I mean when I say that. Yeah. Um, and in the, in the example you gave for the other one where they say my kids come number one, um, that it, that doesn't work. Uh, that you'll never have a uh, successful uh, overall successful relationship where it's a hundred percent both of you together if your kids either biological or from other relationships are ahead of the other person. Um, and people may, may not be able to understand why I would say something like that. Um, and there's probably no way I can explain it that they would understand because they're going to find a way to misunderstand what I'm saying. Uh, but, you know, when you put the kids above the other person, uh, one, um, that person yeah, is second priority. So how about they do the exact same thing to you? You can't get upset with them if you're doing to them what they're doing to you. Sure. It, you know, it doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, yeah. I would say, yeah, for guys, uh, making your purpose, uh, you know, if that to me is, is taking care of my family, that's my number one priority. My, you know, kids are in, in that, um, that, uh, environment. And that, what that would mean is, you know, if my kids were my number one priority, they said, uh, dad, I need you to, you know, spend all of your money on a car for me. Um, and then you're gonna live destitute. I would say, uh, no. But if they were my top priority, I would say, oh, well, sure, I will do that. And then I would then live like a pauper and, you know, being out for the rest of my life. But if I make my purpose the highest thing, I'm still taking care of my family by saying, well, no, we're not going to do it that way. I'm not going to buy you a car. I'm going to teach you how to earn money to get your own car, you know, and work that up. That's, I guess, kind of where I'm going with the whole guys make your purpose your number one priority. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I tend to agree with that, too. You know, I, um, I, I know this is probably going to bring me a little bit of heat from the females, but I do think that... Um, You should never put your kids first over your husband. And I do, and this is is where the heat's going to come in. I do think that the husband should put his purpose above his woman. And and that, that goes because of women's ideology. If a man puts his woman first and he's all about her, she she will over time start to take that for granted. We've Mm -hmm. seen it a thousand times. She'll lose a little bit of respect for you. She has to feel like she's got the best option out there. Women always are looking for the best man she can get. And if she knows no matter what, you ain't going nowhere. You're all about her. The world revolves Mm -hmm. around her. She will start to not only take that for granted, but she'll also start to wonder Where's the bad boy at? Where's the guy who yep. who, who tells me once in a while? She respects the guy who who puts her in her place, or checks her from time to time, who leads. If you put her on yeah. a pedestal, and I've said this before, I didn't make this up, but if you treat her like a celebrity, she'll treat you like a fan. Now, right. why is that different than 
her not putting the kids first. Well, here's why. Because let's use a uh, let's let's say that we're all on a um, a, a, a a cargo ship and we're uh, navigating. We're captains and co-captains of a cargo ship, and we're delivering this heavy, expensive cargo across the country. Right? Which is more important for us to do? Make sure that the maintenance of the cargo stays good without any flaws, or making sure that the maintenance of the ship stays good without any flaws. Hmm. the ship here's hmm. why because <laughs> if the ship starts to take on water it doesn't matter the condition of the cargo right it's all going to fall apart if the cargo starts to uh degrade and maybe some items in the boxes start to get broken or damaged but the ship makes it across the ocean then you brought 95 percent. you're 95 percent successful right. but if the integrity of the ship fails it all fails now, how do that correlate to the man? If the man's not on his purpose and he's the breadwinner and most women are most women want a man who is competent, more competent than them, taller than them, makes more money than them, is uh, more financially stable than them. Um, you know, the uh, sixes, all the sixes. Right. She she's looking for a man who exceeds her talent in just about every way. She wants the highest quality man she can get. No heat, right. no judgment. I get it. I'm, I'm with you on that. But if that guy can't be the family safety net, if he is there, if you get what you want, ladies, and he's the one that has to be out there and provide for you and protect for you, mm -hmm. but he's unable to protect you or provide for you, the ship sinks. That's my <laughs> argument with yeah. the fact, right? I mean, the ship yeah. sinks. And even if chaos did not manifest itself and no one broke into your house and, and, and hurt the family and he never had an opportunity to really protect you, or even if the ship didn't sink because your income um, was able to kind of keep you afloat, mm -hmm. there, you're still going to lose respect for the man and you'll still start look for a, a, a better, better quality man. Yeah, the <laughs> and the relationship fails anyhow. The ship still sink. Whatever. So that's my counter argument. I do think that when it comes to a female, she's got to put her husband in front of the kids. Yeah. Because if there's no good, solid foundation of husband and wife, then there's no relationship. And when there's no relationship and she's raising kids by herself, because 80% of all women get custody of the kids, there is plenty of stats and data to support how detrimental it is to the raising of those kids without a father present. Dwayne yep. has a thousand of those stats and he's ready to fire them off at any given time. It's just overwhelmingly easy to find those stats. You need a husband and a wife to really ma uh, maintain and raise good quality children. So a, a wife needs to make sure, in my opinion, and also Dwayne's opinion, and the opinion of most men, I feel that she oh. needs to make sure that the most important um, relationship that she can take is uh, or keep or maintain or nurture is a relationship between the, the husband and the wife. Because um, to uh, Dwayne's point, I'm sorry, not Dwayne, Jesse's point, building a good home and family is putting your kids first. Folks, there is a reason mm -hmm. that when there are turbulence on an airplane, when things on an airplane start to go off center and the masks fall from the sky, from the top, mm -hmm. there's a reason why they tell you to put yours on first. Because if you are focused on the kids, then you're putting their mask on and then you die, you pass out, you die. The kids are probably going to die if you they're, die. They're screwed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put yours on first and then you start helping those around you. Right. So it's it, it's an unfortunate, un, um, it's an unpleasant thing to think of it, when a woman thinks of, hey, the time that it took me to put my mask on, one of my kids passed out and died. And a man might say, yes, that's true, but we saved two of our three kids. Boy, that doesn't feel good. I can completely understand that. But if you put your mask on those three kids um, and then you died, those kids may not make it off that plane even with their masks on. Right. So it's, 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 boy, I tell you, life, life really is about compromise and trade offs. And sometimes, sometimes the only two options are hell and absolute hell. And you have to pick between one of those. Right. And, and if we're being honest with each other, we know that's true. Number nine, um, how about this one? No pain, no gain. Um, this is one that um, that men are going to be like, ah, okay. Men with a successful careers, they work long, painful hours to yep. reach goals. Yep. Ladies, most of the men that you want have successful careers where they're on their purpose and they're grinding. But ladies who want a comfortable lifestyle have, you know, um, they, they really need to get some sound advice. 
And this is the advice I would give ladies when they're upset about their man working long, painful hours. <laughs> ladies, you need to decide what you are comfortable with. Okay. Right. You want more money or more time? Because very fortunate, very few fortunate people get both. Do you want more money or do you, yep. do you want more money or do you want more of his time? Because you, you, you oftentimes pick one. <laughs> pick one. Dwayne, do you agree with that? Do you think it's off? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the no pain, no gain. Yeah, that's definite, uh, definitely there. And it's funny because women, the things that attracts a woman to a man, his status, his wealth, his resources, that's like the first thing they want to destroy when they get with them. And then when they destroyed it, then they're like, well, you suck. And then they go out to the next idiot. <laughs> right. Right. I just, it blows my mind. I, you know, I'll keep names out of it. I uh, got a girl that's been uh, looking for, you know, p ticked off that there's no good quality men out there, uh, dating scene, yada, yada, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Finally finds uh, a guy. Um, and again, there was so much more I could say about this, but finds this schmo, this idiot that thinks that she's quality. And the first thing she says is, um, he's committed to me, but I'm thinking about cheating on him with another guy that I, that I like better. Is that wrong? She, <laughs> and I, I'm, like, I'm keeping names out of it, situations out of it. But this was presented to a person that's very red-pilled, and that person's response was, are you effing kidding, kidding me? me? Yeah. 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 And, the, and the person knew even asking that, but a whole different thing. But... I don't, that's one of the, that's one of those things that when we go out to the uh, to the fire pit and sit there and think about you know from your first questions that's what guys think about it's like why do women find guys that are high quality that bust their ass I mean then the high quality is the you know bust their ass successful work hard smart you know, do all those things and then the first thing they want to do is destroy it I don't that is something I've set out the wood fire uh, or the the fire and just went how how does that make sense it it. There are so many things about a female brain. Oh God, and, and and I don't I don't mean to sound rude, but that men would just never understand. I mean the I, I don't get the wiring, and I and I believe, and I say this with all. I mean, I'm I'm trying to be as nice as I can about what I'm about to say, but that <laughs> is the reason why it's 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 by and large it's good for men to lead because men will make more rational, sound unbiased decisions and take the emotion out of it clearly that woman who asked that awful dumb stupid question her she ran her feelings through her emotions and you know her she's she's being emotional about it she's going off of what she feels she's attracted to this other guy but she likes this guy do you think it's the right thing deep down inside she knows that that was a dumb question and she knows that it's not right but she's going to ask the stupid question every guy in the world just face palm themselves when they heard her say that and they just can't believe that someone who is so seemingly intelligent or supposed to be could ask such a dumb dumb question so you know, um, that is why it's very important to take your emotions out of good uh, of, of any decision that is medium or important on a scale of importance level, because that kind of stuff right there is a perfect example. I just, you know, I, I'm just going to move on from that because I, I'm about to get twisted. So the very last one, the very last one, this poll was done by men. Um, I've actually said this before. So is Dwayne, um, but uh, I'll, I'll just read it. Men don't care about women's money. Equality is complicated. Single women earn more money than ever before. So when a bro says to a woman, I'm uh, sorry, when a bro says women date above their financial status, a backlash is imminent. Yeah. So being able to provide what you want for yourself is that toxic is the, the stance that women will say, I want to be able to provide, you know, myself what I want, you know, why is that so toxic? So you, you can imagine the back and forth that goes along with this. So here's the, here's a shortcut direct. Do men really care about women's money? Mm, no, we could give two poos less about women's money. And if I could add a little uh, thing in there, we are tired of hearing ladies talk about how they pay the bills, how they pay their own bills. Like I pay my own bills. I don't need a man. I pay my own Netflix. I pay my own this. We don't care. We, that, that's like a Tuesday for guys. We yeah. do not 
air. I'm I mean, sorry. I did, I did a meme about it on my personal Facebook page a couple days ago where uh, women, you know, they, they pay their bills and they think they're the queens. They're uh, they're strong and uh, advent or strong and whatever. And yeah. uh, Wakanda forever. And all sorts of independent. Yeah. Guys don't care. We will know, guys, down. guys, you, you know, what we call that ladies adulting. <laughs> yeah. Being a human in the in the real world, the, the big boy Being world. an adult. Oh, and by the way, if I can just add another little stinger here, getting child support uh, and pay and using the money to pay that bill, that's not paying your bills. <laughs> getting money from the government is not paying your bills because more men pay in taxes than women. And child support comes from a man most cases. So you're still leaning on the support of other men if you get any sort of assistance at all. I know it's a little convoluting, and I'm not saying that women don't deserve it, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying all that. All I'm saying, though, is before you get out there and start bragging about something that you probably shouldn't brag about, you know, I would, I, you know, I want you to understand what goes through the mindsets of men. We are not impressed with your money. We can't no. spend your money anyways. Who funds the dating relationships? Not in marriage, but when you're dating, who funds most dating? Men do. Man. Okay, so we don't care about your money. It's not impressive. Don't put it on your dating profile. Don't lead with it. When you're talking about, um, when you're in a conversation talking about your value to the other person, don't talk about that because that is not something that is impressive. It would be the equivalent of us bragging about how good our golf score is to you, and that makes us a good dude. You probably care nothing about how I score in golf. You you don't care if I can break 100 or if I shoot over 100. It right. means nothing to you. It's kind of the same thing. So listen, Dwayne, I want to applaud you. Good job today on the on the top 10 things, you know, for just waking up and join the, prod, the, the podcast on the 11th hour. You did a fantastic job. I appreciate everyone, Todd, uh, Jesse, Aaron, everyone who's, yeah. uh, you know, contributed to the chat today. I appreciate you guys' feedback as always. Um, that wraps up the show today. Dwayne, did you want to add anything else before we adjourn? Uh, no, I mean, everything. Yeah. Uh, and just, uh, I know the ladies are upset, but this got put together in like 30 seconds. This was like right out of the shower. I know women get upset. Like they have to spend hours getting ready and guys can just roll out of the shower <laughs> hit it, and, and this, and you know what? I, I, I just want to do a quick general poll here. So my glasses got, uh, my other glasses got broke. And so this is my my spare uh, pair. My wife says she loves these. I think I look like a freaking dork, and that's saying a lot. Being a dork, I I, I like them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I like All them. Right. I the, thought the, I would the, like them. The only the only thing that um, that I might make a comment on them is maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the angle. But uh, it seems like those glasses put off more reflection. I can see oh, your yeah. computer screens through the glasses more than I think I saw the other ones. Maybe I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. But they, they just seem to reflect what it is. So I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, Other than that, I, I think they look good. Okay. All right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. I'm probably going to get catch hell over that one. But, yeah, it, I, I put them on, and I, I think I look more like a dork than I normally do. And. She said she liked him. I, I I don't know. I think she's just trying to keep it to where I'm not hot to the other girls. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Brandy has her tactics. Because they're beating down my door. <laughs> they are. They are they're beating down your door. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, as always, I want to thank you guys for tuning into the podcast. You know, you guys are very special to Dwayne and I. Without you, the podcast wouldn't exist. You know, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You know, every time um, you guys do that, it makes the algorithms just uh, – put it in front, put the video in front of other people who may not know who the Big Show po podcast is. If you guys like the topics that we're talking about, if you feel that someone in your life, someone that you know, could benefit from some of this red pill wokeness or just like what I want to call common sense reality, then sense. Be, sure to, be sure to share that video with them and, and, and tell them to tune in. The Big Show is live on air every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, you guys have a great week. Be the best you can, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care.